2018-2019 Chevy Bolts. Get ready for refrigerant management systems and thermal management systems. It's no longer just heating and cooling. For the technicians who are coming into the field and the ones who've been in the field for 20 or 30 years or more, here's an example. You have cabin cooling. This is your internal heat exchanger. The liquid line and the suction line fall within one, one pipe. There's the expansion valve right back there. Here's where the liquid line goes internal and travels being subcooled by the low side cool line. But they also come back here to another expansion valve that is directly ported into a thermal heat exchanger. This heat exchanger actually passes coolant through these plates, but it also passes cold refrigerant through these plates. Every other one of these plates, one plate, and you see every little tiny line is an individual plate separated by a piece of metal. Refrigerant passes in one direction, cold refrigerant, but hot coolant passes in the other direction to go out. So every other plate is coolant, refrigerant, coolant, refrigerant, coolant, refrigerant. You have two expansion valves to diagnose on the system. And if you have an overheating problem, that's down here that you can barely see, some systems might have three or four electric water pumps diverting coolant to different directions. So here we got to cool off this module up here. You got the coolant going in, coolant going out right there. We have to keep this cool. We also have to keep this cool down here. Everything is about cooling. If you don't cool, you'll be dead. If you notice all the coolant passages in and out, and either they're going through what we used to call a radiator, just think of them as a heat exchanger. A condenser is nothing more than another heat exchanger. A plate heat exchanger, another heat exchanger. You can also have this expansion valve located all the way to the rear of the vehicle in the battery pack having direct injection of refrigerant through the battery pack in the rear of the vehicle. That would be like on some of your BMWs. Some of your other vehicles may have air to air where they stick another expansion valve to another evaporator in the rear of vehicle, then feeding cool air over the battery to cool it off. So there's many different topologies that are used. I'm doing a recovery here. In this case, right now, through this three quarter inch vacuum hose, I'm cleaning out and making sure there's no moisture or air inside my manifold or any of my refrigerant hoses going all the way up to the fittings before I have them off right now. Before I have them connected, I want my manifold completely dry and clean. So it gives me the best high quality recovered refrigerant for the job that I'll be performing. This is all recovered out and this, everything is sealed and recovered. And as you can see here, I'm down to 93 microns. You have a complete clean dry system air free ready for recovery you just don't hook up gauges have gauges sitting around for a couple days and then hook them up again you literally clean and dry your gauges and your hoses between every job it's a little bit more time but here we have a high voltage electric compressor that has to be moisture free and the oil breaks down really fast and the acids get formed really fast with the combination of refrigerant and the hot electric windings of the motor. Uh, more will be taken up this in a future video to explain in more detail.